Welcome everyone to 6.3, the natural exponential function. We have a trend going here in chapter six, a little bit of review with properties of exponentials that we should know from previous algebra classes. And then we're go, gonna go on to the new stuff and that's derivatives and integrals of these new functions that we have. So let's get to it with a definition. All right, so the claim is that the inverse of the thing that we did last time, which was the natural logarithmic function, well, this thing, first of all, has an inverse, which, right, all functions don't necessarily have an inverse, but this one does, and it's denoted by exp of x. Another way we write that is sometimes just e to the x. You may have seen this more often in your previous math classes. And this thing has a nice property, right? So because it's the inverse, the way that we define this is that e to the x is equal to y if and only if the natural log of y is equal to x, right? That's how inverses are defined. There's this interchanging of the x and the y sort of deal. Whew. All right. So because, again, it's the inverse, there's these nice cancellation equations, right? e to the natural log of x is equal to x whenever it makes sense, that's for x greater than zero, and the natural log of e to the x is equal to x, and this one, the claim is that it's true for all x. How nifty. So there's these nice cancellations, right? They kind of cancel, and the thing that you have left over is just x. So let's try to use these. I'd like to solve this equation, right? And this is some review of algebra. So maybe the first thing I want to do is divide by two on both sides. I want to isolate this e to the two minus x. And now the next thing, right, my goal is to solve for x here. I'm solving this equation. So maybe the next thing I want to do is apply a natural log to both sides. And the idea here is that we have these cancellation equations, right? This one up here in particular looks especially nice, right? These things should cancel. And the only thing that I have left over is whatever was in the exponent. And that's 2 minus x. So this is equal to the natural log of 15. And then now I can solve this for x, right? Add x on both sides, subtract 15 from both sides, or sorry, the natural log of 15 from both sides, and boom, we have x equals. We have solved this equation. And maybe for fun, you know, this is the first one we're doing. Why don't we check and make sure that, right, I didn't make any mistakes. So I'm going to plug in my value that I think is the solution into the original equation. So here we go. And I hope at the end of the day, I should get 15. So yes, there's a little bit of cancellation here. Or I guess I hope I get 30, my bad. Uh, yeah, so two times. And again, this is now the different cancellation equation. That's why it's two times 15. And of course, two times 15 is 30. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about properties of the natural exponential function. You may remember these, right? So again, the natural exponential function, this e to the x is increasing. It's continuous and it has a big domain. It's all of the real numbers, right? So this is from negative infinity all the way up to infinity. And the range is always positive. Thus, e to the x is always greater than zero, right? It will never spit out zero, never spit out any negatives. It'll only spit out positives. And a few limit properties, right? So if you go really far to the left, uh, e to the x gets really close to zero. And if you go really far to the right, aka, you know, positive infinity, well, e to the x looks like infinity. It shoots off. And we will see this here in just a second. Uh, and of course, this first equation, this uh, limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x equals zero means that it has a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. All right, so let's sketch this thing really fast. We know what the natural log looks like. Oops, yeah, there we go. So we know what the natural log looks like. It looks something like this. And we know it crosses here at one, right? So the natural log of one is equal to zero. And we also know that the natural log of e is equal to one. That's how we define e. And we know that the exponential, the natural exponential and the natural log are inverses, which means that they are this graph kind of reflected over this y equals x line. Right, so if I reflect this purple curve over the line y equals x, well, I'm going to start to draw this blue curve, and this is going to be e to the x. So the claim is that, well, at 1, it will spit out e. At 0, it will spit out 1, kind of right, reversing these x and y coordinates. And in general, the graph looks something like this, e to the x. So you can see these properties from up above. right? So as x gets really close to negative infinity, 
we have a horizontal asymptote, it gets really close to zero. And if it goes off to the right, right, as x goes to positive infinity, well, this graph shoots off. And you get something, you know, it's equal to infinity. Or it diverges is another calculus term. You also may remember some laws of exponents, right? There was these things that hold true, and that is if you add two exponents together and they have this common base, well, you can rip these things apart, right? And instead, you can multiply e to the x times e to the y. And there's also this property about subtraction, right? So instead of subtracting x and y, these exponentials, you can rip them apart and you do e to the x divided by e to the y. And then finally, if you have an exponential and you raise it up to another exponential, well, then that's just e to the r x. All right, and that'll wrap it up for this video. This has been basically the review video of algebra properties of exponentials. Next time, we'll go on to the calculus, that is derivatives and integrals, and how we can apply these to our exponentials. I'll see you then.